to math. Sometimes math's a little scary. It doesn't need to be. Today we're talking about fractions. Um, dive in a little bit deeper um, from our understanding of fractions and how it relates to division. Um, we talked a little bit before about, um, you know, one third of six. And today I'm going to expand on that. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper and we're going to say, you know, what happens if there's a bigger number? You know, it's easy to, you know, one third of six uh, to draw, you know, six pieces and split them into thirds. Boom, boom, boom. What's one third of six? Here's one third. It equals two, right? Easy, easy to do. But what happens if there's a bigger number? Say we have a number like 35. And I say, I want three fifths of 35. We used arrays. We used counters, right? We um, placed our pieces out like I just showed you. Um, and all of those are great, but once we get to a, a bigger number where it's like, ah, oh, that's kind of ridiculous, we got to start thinking abstractly. And, and math allows us to do that. Um, and so I'm going to teach you something uh, called a tape diagram. And this might not be teaching you anything because we should know what a tape diagram is, but um, we're going to use it a little differently and we're going to have, have it help us with fractions. So a tape diagram, you know what? Let's draw a better box. A better box. All right, so here it is, and we don't want to fill it, so uh, goodbye. All right, so here's our tape diagram, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to label this entire thing as 35, because that is our whole. So this is representative of 35, and I know that it is three-fifths, so I'm dealing with fifths. So I'm going to split my tape diagram into fifths, um, and because it's fifths. I want it to be as equal as possible. Um, so yeah, it's a yeah, it's a little little bit. Um, so let's try this again. That's a little better. Uh, this one's not very good. Okay, so we're dealing with fifths, all right? So we're just gonna call these all equal parts. Now, when we're the question's asking, what's three fifths of the thirty-five? So three of these, okay? There's our there's our question. That's this abstractly. We drew this. We made some art with it. So now the question is, how do I figure out what these three equal? If I know that this is 35, I know that there are five equal pieces. What does that mean? Well, what we can do is because there are five equal pieces, this is a fifth, this is a fifth, another fifth, another fifth, another fifth, and they're all the same. When we divide, that's exactly what we're doing. And because there are five parts, one, two, three, four, five, um, we can divide it by five. And that's going to give us what one of these parts equals. We should all know what 35 divided by five is. Um, and that would be seven. So that means that this is seven, this is seven, this is seven, this is seven, and this is seven. Hey, wait a minute. Look at this. This is seven, this is seven, this is seven, right? So we have three fifths of it, which would be 21. So our answer, three fifths of 35, is actually 21. So that's that's how we would do that. Now, if I asked you what four fifths would, uh, would be, you would just add that next seven. We'd know it as 28, okay? So that's how we kind of do that. Now, how would we apply this understanding to a word problem? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> so what, what I have here is, uh, I have a, a little story problem or word problem. Uh, Sarah buys two dozen roses of these roses, three fourths are red, um, and the rest are white. How many right roses did she buy? Well, let's bring back our tape diagram because that's what we're using. And, um, let me just drag that down here. And let's pick apart our problem. So I'm just going to circle a couple of things that we, we should know. This is a need to know basis and I need to know. Okay. So Sarah buys two dozen roses. What's two dozen mean? Right? Uh, a dozen is 12, right? You go, you go to the store, you buy, pack, you buy a dozen eggs, you'll get 12 of them. Um, so two dozen is going to be 24, right? 24 eggs. Um, in this case, we're dealing with roses, not eggs. Um, let me clarify that. This is an egg, kind of, and we're not dealing with eggs. We are dealing with roses. What does a rose look like? Um, that's not what a rose looks like, but you get what I'm talking about. Okay. Anyways, 
um, we're dealing with roses. And so um, of these roses, three-fourths are red. So I know I'm going to split this into fourths, right? And in order to make this look beautiful, I'm going to cut it here. And then that is a little easier to do. Okay, so I have it in fourths. Three-fourths are red. So this is red. This is red. This is red. And this is white. Of the rest... Uh, the rest are white. So that means three-fourths red, one-fourth white. So here's a fourth, here's a fourth, here's a fourth. The question is, what is this? Right? How many white roses did she have? Well, the same concept that we did before, right? What is three-fourths of 24? Here's what the question's really asking if we take it for its just basic understanding. Right? Three-fourths of 24 um is red so it's it's this question and it's one fourth of 24 so there's kind of two questions going on and really we want to answer this one because this is the white okay so when we take this what we can do is because it's split into fourths we can divide equally this is the same fourth as this one as this one as this one 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6 meaning each part is 6 Okay, so one fourth of 24, just one of these we know is six. So how many white roses did she have? Um, we can write it, I'll write it down here. Sarah had, it's a word problem, had six white roses. Now to expand this further, if she had six white roses, how many red roses did she have? Well, if these are six, let's write it with a blue. Right, so six here, six, six, and six. Um, six times three is 18. So this one, if we're talking about, this is 18, right? So three fourths of 24, because one, two, three would be 18. How did I get that? By adding these three together or by multiplying by three, same thing. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing. This is how you use a tape diagram. Now for bigger numbers, for word problems, just a quick, easy way to kind of see it, to visualize it, to make it, make the problem make sense, and to kind of understand uh, what fractions are and realize they're not as hard as they might seem.